Hey guys, it's Rob. I just wanted to do a video on how to flash uh, BL Heli firmware to this Qbrain 4-in-1 ESC. I've always liked this speed controller because of its uh, form factor. You get four ESCs in one, fairly easy to install, and uh, it's nice and compact. They're 25 amp capacity with a 30 amp uh, 10 second burst. The other advantage of using this is you don't need a separate uh, power distribution board because all you need to do is uh, put your battery terminal plug on here and uh, plug the, the battery in and away you go. The ESC leads, uh, one of them has uh, a BEC outputting uh, 3 amps, 5 volts, and uh, the other three just go into the, speed, the flight controller also. So uh, yeah, really easy to install. In fact, it's such a neat layout. I tried it on uh, one of my recent Armaten frames. Uh, this is a 400 uh, 3D frame. I haven't set it up for 3D yet, but I just wanted to test the, uh, the motors and the the um, speed controller. This is another Q-Brain, which you can see is mounted on the bottom there. I have flashed this already with BL Heli, and uh, it performs very well. Um, probably not ideally suited to these motors because they're very high KV, but uh, overall, the handling is, is excellent. With BL Heli, you get some advanced features such as the ability to use one shot and uh, also damped light, which is a form of active braking, which um, decelerates the motors any time they need to reduce speed. So yeah, so it does perform very well, significantly better than the stock firmware in the Q-Brain. And uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do is just go through some of the steps that you need to, uh, to upgrade this. And uh, I'll just make this video on a number of different parts because uh, for the initial flash, you actually have to disassemble this uh, speed controller. So we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. But the, um, the device you're going to need is uh, what I've got here is called an Arduino Nano. Now this is a version three. I actually bought two of them because they're only $5 each. And there's actually two modes that you'll uh, be able to use this in. One is in the C2 mode, and that's what you're going to need when you do the initial flash. So let me just, uh, let me just explain one thing. These are both identical uh, hardware, and they both contain exactly the same firmware flash, which I'll show you in a minute how to set that up. What's different though, for the C2 mode, is how I've set the wires. Now you'll see, as I've plugged that in, I've actually swapped the red and the yellow wires there, and they terminate just in the three bare pins. That's actually what you're going to need when you, uh, when you open up the speed controller and do the flash. So that's for the initial flash. This um, Speed controller does not have any form of bootloader enabled, so you actually have to flash it using the pins. After you've done that initial flash and you have BL Heli on here, you won't need to open it up anymore, and you can actually use bootloader mode. Okay, now for that, as I said, this is exactly the same piece of hardware with the same firmware on board, but you'll see I've got a slightly different plug uh, connected. I've really just got the ground and the, uh, the signal wire and it's just going to uh, the standard um, terminal there. I've just got like a four-way splitter there for when I calibrate the ESCs later. So once you've got BL Heli onto this speed controller, um, you don't need to open it up anymore. The bootloader will be enabled and any further updates or any adjustments can be made directly just by plugging in this uh, ESC plug into the, um, the splitter down there. So, uh, so that makes it a lot easier. All right, I'll just uh, stop there, and uh, then we'll take you through how to actually flash one of these uh, Arduino Nano version 3 boards. So just taking you through this next step, how to flash and prepare the Arduino Nano board. Um, you'll have to solder these pins on yourself when you get the, uh, the board, depending on who you get it from. Um, it may come pre-soldered, but I had to solder those pins myself. The actual documentation that comes with the BL Heli Suite tells you exactly how to make this, and... Uh, and which pins it needs to be soldered to. So, uh, all right, we've got the pin soldered. I've now got it plugged into my laptop using a standard um, mini USB plug, and we've opened up BL Heli Suite 14.2.01. Try and get that in focus. The first thing we need to do is make the interface. So let's have a look. So just here, you'll see make interface. And what you need to do is come down here and make a Arduino four-way interface. I'm sorry if it keeps going in and out of focus. So that's the one you want to select. You click on that. 
and it says select interface options. Yes, that's the one we want. Click OK. Now the uh, file you want is this bottom one, one that says uh, 16PD3PD2 version 1.40, 1 1.4201. So click on that and then we'll go open and it says do you want to flash? It's just going through the process now. Okay, so what you're looking for there is the flash has been verified and that it's done. So this has now been set up and it can be used in the C2 mode or the bootloader mode. And I'll, I'll get to that shortly when we when we actually flash the ESC. But uh, let me just show you here. Now when, you, when you're ready for flashing, you'll need to select the that one there, Scilab C2, that's going to be necessary for the initial flash of this uh, 4-in-1. For later um, updates or, or flashing newer versions of BL Heli, once you have the bootloader enabled, you'll come down and you'll actually do it that way. Okay, so as I said, the, the hardware is the same. The only difference will be whether you need uh, the cable with the, the, the four, sorry, the three pins there or whether you're going to actually use the bootloader mode and uh, in which case the cable is slightly different but it's all documented fairly well in the BL Heli suite. So let's get to uh, flashing this uh, the SC. So now we're getting to the uh, actual flashing of the board, the initial flash with uh, BL Heli. I've opened up the Cubrain and uh, one thing I noticed, it's a bit different to the uh, the previous ones I had. It's got a little bit of uh, glue here on the plastic. I had to uh, just break that off very carefully. My, my two other Cubrains didn't have that, so just if you're disassembling one of these, just be, be mindful that uh, when you take the screws off, it won't actually just pull off easily, so you just have to carefully pry that open. But uh, that's all fairly straightforward. Now, what I recommend you do is have a look at the BL Heli um, manuals that actually lists the different uh, compatible ESCs. And, uh, You'll see there, there's a picture of the uh, Quattro opened up and you'll see these little diagrams here where it's got white, red and black and down here white, red and black, black, red and white, black, red and white. So those are the pads that you're going to need to uh, to touch with the pins to actually flash the ESC. And the, um, the firmware that you want is the Skywalker 20 amp but uh, we'll get to that shortly. But let me just go through the uh, the configuration. So we've got the cable connected to the Arduino Nano version 3, which uh, we're now using in the C2 mode. So as you'll see, I've got the ground, which is the black. I've got the yellow wire in the middle and the red wire on the, uh, the far side there. Okay, so I actually did swap over those pins because you'll see that the arrangement here is slightly different, you'll see the red pin is now in the middle. So just having a look at that, let's take a look at this uh, top right pad and let's see how it's going to look on the uh, on the actual board itself. So you'll see there's white, red, there's a, one that's unmarked and then there's a black. There's actually four pins there, four pads I should say. Let's have a look where they are. So they're actually right there. Okay, you've got four pads. So basically we want black on this one. We'll skip that second one from the right and then we want red on this one and then white on that one. In the case of uh, our unit, white is actually the yellow lead. So basically what you need to do is just bend the pin slightly. You'll see I've just bent them a little bit. And when we actually come to flashing, you're going to have to hold those pins just like that. It is a little bit of a tricky job I found the first time I did it, so I'll need an assistant to uh, to video when I'm doing this, but basically you need to hold it like that, and then you'll need to add power to the ESC, and then you'll need to flash. Okay, so what I'm using at the moment for power is just a, uh, a bit of a lab power supply. It's current limited, I've only got it on half an amp, so I'll just drop that voltage down a little bit too. I do recommend you use a current limiting source when flashing these, less chance of something going wrong. But um, failing that, you know, if you've only got a LiPo, that's uh, that's really the way to do it. But um, I'd recommend if you can get 
hold of some sort of current limiting device, um, definitely always a, a good idea when you're flashing an ESC. So that's the first set of pads we want. The next set is down here, same arrangement. We want it like that. When we come to the other side, you'll see black is now on the left. So we'll take this uh, cable, we'll flip it over, and then we will press down on those pads, just like that. And then we'll do the same down here. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just go and get my assistant and we'll actually go through the flashing process. Hey guys, Rob, and uh, just showing you the uh, interface you'll need to select when we want to flash this firmware. So we go into interface selection, select B, which is the Scilab C2. That's the one you need to select for the uh, for the initial flash because there's no bootloader currently installed on this uh, ESC. Now if you come down here, have a look at uh, how I've got those pins. The black uh, pin is on the right hand side, so I've just got that there. It needs a bit of a steady hand. So you'll just need to hold that. Now if we come back up to the BL Heli Suite interface, and we need to cl click, uh, make sure it's in the right port. We've got COM port 8 for this uh, device, and then we go connect. Okay, so it's connected. We now need to go to flash BL Heli. Okay, now if it's all connected correctly, you'll get that option. If it's not, it'll say ESC not found. Now what we need to um, select is the right firmware. The right firmware for the Q-Brain is this one here, Skywalker 20 amp and the 20 amp multi firmware. Okay, so that's the one we want to select. We'll click OK. It's saying the original firmware will be erased. That's fine. There is no way to go back. Do you want to flash? Yes, we do. So again, keeping those pins firmly pressed on the pads, let's flash. Okay, so that's successfully flashed. Okay, so now we've got BL Heli flashed to one of the ESCs in this Q-Brain. What I'll do is just show you the parameters that I set. First thing I want to do is turn temperature protection off. We turn off uh, low RPM power protect. We set DMAG compensation to low. And uh, for PWM frequency damped, we set it to damped light and everything else can stay normal at this stage. So just making sure that these pins are still touching the pads. If we now hit right setup, that should write okay, which it did do. So that's now set up. And uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and flash the remaining three ESCs on this board, and then I'll show you how I calibrate. So now we've got uh, BL Heli flashed on all four ESCs in this speed controller, and I've got it uh, put back together, put the cover back on. The beauty of having uh, BL Heli now is that you have uh, bootloader enabled. So any further firmware updates or uh, adjustments you need to make, you never have to open it up again. It's just uh, done via the ESC lead and uh, into the same device, the Arduino Nano, but this time we're in bootloader mode. So I've just got a slightly different cable there and uh, it does explain how to do that in the BL Heli documentation. But uh, when we come up to the software suite itself, we'll need to change that to D, which is the Scilabs BL Heli bootloader mode. So we'll do that. We'll click uh, connect, make sure we're in the right COM port, which is uh, eight there for this computer. We'll click connect and we're now connected. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just read the setup. Read setup and you'll see it says uh, read successfully. So that's confirming the bootloader mode is definitely working. And we can go ahead and change any of these parameters or make adjustments to uh, to the ESC itself. So all working very nicely. Now, what you'll see when you buy the um, the Q-Brain is you get this uh, four-way splitter cable. And uh, so the final step is just to calibrate the uh, ESC correctly. And as you can see, I've got all four um, ESC leads plugged into this four-way splitter, which actually comes with the uh, with the Q-Brain. The first thing I'll do is uh, I've just got it connected to a, a normal little servo test there. So we'll increase that to uh, to maximum throttle and we'll connect power. I've got one motor connected just so we can hear the beats. Okay, so that's the um, calibration tone you get with BL Heli. That's also confirming that uh, it does have the right firmware on the uh, on the speed controller. 
Once you get that tone, what you want to do is just decrease to minimum throttle very quickly. So. And that's the tone sequence that sets the minimum point. Okay, what you must do now is just recycle power. Recycle. So we've got the heli and let's just run this motor just briefly. So as you can see, it's all working fine. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.